Welcome back in to SWH Live. Chris Treft, soon to be joined by Jeremy Ellis. Uh, all Palma matchup here. Lebeda Palma Shakers. Palma Lebeda Golden Knights. All Palma needs is two points to get the three seed and pass Rebel. A regulation loss to the Shakers and Palma would have to play the Snipers. And if they lose in a the shootout, all kinds of crazy stuff will happen. Now to pass the Mudcats. To pass the Mudcats. Now no in with a shot, he scores. Well, that was quick. Well, earlier in the Sniper shootout to the skills competition, no went three for three against Moyenin. And... Same spot, literally the same exact spot. He shot all three times on him. <laughs> he scores. Four, no, four for four. 19 seconds in. Not a big deal. Not at all. So Travis No makes it one nothing. Now I'm going to go over the math here for you real quick. Knights at minus one. Mudcats at plus six. So now, for all intents and purposes, the Knights are even. They have 13 goals against. So if they don't give up a goal... As Cadiz flies into the zone, tries to fire to no. If they don't give up a goal, they can win 7 0. <laughs> and do we need a calculator? And get no, and get the two seed. If they do give up a goal, they need to win by eight. They need to, they need to mercy him. Is that right? No. They can win <laughs> they can win six nothing. If they give up a goal, they have to win by seven. Because coming into the game, they're both 13 goals against. But Palma has scored way less goals. But actually go to a shootout. That's a two-point game. No, no, no. I'm saying it would go to a four-man shootout. Because if Palma wins 7 nothing, right, they would be tied in every category. Except the best one, penalty minutes. That that one's before a, a four-man shootout? No. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Get you a little excited. Here's a chance. Fiala, four-inch shot. Oh, and it goes through the crease. And Rayfield makes the save. Blake Rayfield, the backup goaltender for the Knights, in between the pipes. Now Har, a shot. Mulliganen makes the save. And then it's cleared by Palma back into their own zone. So now do you have the math ready after all that awfulness of adding? I'm not even sure what you're talking about. Okay, so Palma can still get the two seed. Two seed, got you, go ahead. So they have to win seven nothing. All right? Yes. If they give up a goal, then they they lose the goal against second tiebreaker. So then they would have to win by eight. So go for the seven. So you win seven nothing? or a mercy rule victory, that's how they would get the two seed. Okay. Which is gonna be tough, because the Shakers have an excellent goaltender, even though they, you know, they gave up a goal 19 seconds in, but. And they have a lot of firepower too. John Seymour, a high shot, Mullionen makes the save. Now you got it all down? Yeah, now I got you. Two seed, I didn't realize what you were talking about. Pass comes in front, it's blocked. Fifteen thirteen left in the first. One nothing. Palma Golden Knights lead. Jordan Thomas takes it behind the net. All right, I figured it all out, Ellis. Now wait to, you, wait to the, hear this. The meaning of life or what? No, no, for the two seed. <laughs> Palma can win seven. <laughs> I was getting excited. Oh, where's here. George? Where is he right now? At a wedding somewhere. A wedding? That's the rumor. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Bones. Now a chance here. And Thomas takes on his man, a power play to the Shakers. To get the two seed, Palma has to win seven nothing or by eight goals if they give up a goal. Okay. I'm going to say the likelihood of that happening. If they win 6 nothing, is very low. We have a, a potential for a shootout well, that to determine the tonight. 2 and 3 seed. 
That won't happen tonight. It will have to be tonight. No, it would not be tonight. Why? How, how could it be tonight? Are you going to do it in the morning before the game? Well, what two teams how would you like to do it? Mudcats and... What are you going to do? Tell the Mudcats nice. to show up at midnight tonight? Yeah, the Mudcats won't come back. They'll do it before games tomorrow. Well, if the Shakers score a goal, it won't matter. <laughs> All these questions. John Seymour, a shorthanded break. He shoots Mulligan and makes the save. Big save there. Well, if you ever want to see a man give up on a breakaway, it was number three on the Shakers. He just knew there was no chance that he was going to catch John John. Rebound, they score. Well, it's tied at one, and now an eight-goal mercy rule will have to happen if Palma wants to get that two seed. Well, we know all the scenarios. We've checked all the boxes. Revel now can still get the the three seed and not have to pay the snipers if the Shakers win. These jerseys are a little tough out here. They're both both pretty dark. I And the pants are literally like the Shakers pants are old Palma pants. Like gold and everything. Now Martin Fiala. Wrist shot, and that one's blocked. Who's the net down there? Rayfield, Blake Rayfield. Nice. Backup goalie for the Bama La Beta Golden Knights. Won a playoff game at Torres against the excitement. Thank you for that stat. Fiala, a wrist shot, he scores! Watch out. Their big score. Makes it 2-1, 13 22 left in the first. Well, all these 0 3 teams trying to get off the Schneid tonight. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> hey, Envious did it. Your turn, Dennis. Yeah. Uh, don't worry about it. It's all good. I'm trying to give hey, you a are you little. Gonna, are you gonna hey, play? like they always say, we're here to have a good time, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, Dennis, you're going to play the box tonight just for S's Listen, and G's? All I've been hearing is people busting my chops about playing the box. You saw it in the last game. You didn't say anything to them, did you? We said it. We talked about it. Oh, oh you went down there and talked to them about we it? We had conversations. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> Let's send up the Buffalo Wings, Coach. Let's see if you say it to him. For the Buffalo Wings. Get Eric up here. Get Eric up here. We're talking about the envious gameware wings. To be exact. Envious uh, gameware. Bar down creative. Makers of excellent jerseys. Olinger to the zone, he shoots and scores. Beats Mullion in on the blocker side. Tied at two, 12.41 left in the first. I like this pace. Let's you think go. it's going to be a mercy in this game, huh? Nobody said that. It's early, bro. <laughs> you're still going to need it. I, I didn't say it was going to be. I said that's what Palma has to do to get the two seed. I see. And it's the difference of playing Rink Rat. Uh-huh. Or... The Roadrunners. Okay. If you lose, you play the Roadrunners. If you win, you play Rink Rat. And if you lose in regulation, then you play the Snipers. So. Wow. That's wide open. Any three opponents? Yeah. All right. Put a poll out there. Who's got the best uniforms in the Pro Division this year? Two on one. Garrett Haar into the zone, shoots, and Mulligan makes the pad stop. Are you talking overall set or individual jersey? Well, let's go individual because I, I think a team like this the Shakers only has one. Wow. Shot off the crossbar. Crossbar is working tonight. And then it's cleared back into the Shakers zone. I'm going to go this one, the Golden Knights. I said like the last couple tournaments. I like this one a lot, a lot. I like this one as well. I like Rink Rat's new uniform from top to bottom. Like if you include pants, I don't like the pants here of Palma. A little too plain uh, when okay. you have such a great jersey. I like the red helmets when Rink Rat uh, wears those. I Rink, like that. Like the, 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 the jersey and pants all together. And not just because Dennis is on the air, I really like the gray. Gray? Gray Grizzlies. You jersey. don't like the red? I like the red too. I like the gray. I make just the Where did you come up with that? Gray. What do you, what we do you call wearing, it silver. What do you so, wear next game? 
What are you wearing? What color are you wearing next game? We haven't decided yet. Okay. I I'm think both coaches have decided to uh, play the game themselves. Junior Cadiz shoots and scores, beats Mullion on the blocker side. Three to two lead for the Golden Knights. So are you lacing them up later on in the tournament, Dennis? No shot. No? Those days are way wow. behind me. Wow. Former, no. former teammate of mine. You That's right. I, That's right. You and I got Former to. teammate in the 35 <laughs> and over division, Jeremy Ellis. Wow. <laughs> wow. We got a silver medal in that? How'd that go? I think so. And Alex Morrison as well. We'll plug him right now. Oh, boy. What yeah. a goal scorer That was my is. defense partner that tournament. Here comes Oleski looking for his third of the tournament. Forehead shot, he scores. 4-2, 10-37 <laughs> left in the first. Wow. Right over his shoulder. This game's taking a turn, huh? This I, I is like fun. It. This game is fun. All right, so hey, we're back to our, our jersey pull. What was your top one, Ellis? Uh, man. I like, the, I like the look of the new black ice uniforms. Silver, though? You said gray or gray, not our red? Come on. I haven't seen the, the, the Grizzlies jerseys yet. These Golden Knights jerseys are nice. I mean, they're just a little bit too oh, busy for pass. me. Yeah, but it works, too. Like, it's it's busy, but it's also professional a little bit. Sure. It's strong, powerful. You know, I just looked at the clock and realized we're only eight minutes into this game. <laughs> we have six goals. Wow. <laughs> we interrupt this talk about jerseys for another goal. <laughs> Cadiz has it. These games, these games hey. will wear on you. Four games in two days. These games will definitely. And three tomorrow? Yeah. John, Possibly? You'll feel it. You will feel especially in this rink, and it's a little steamy in here. Next year, my uniform's going to be a referee jersey. How's that sound? Let's do it. I'm going to come up with a referee jersey uniform. <laughs> make them wear something stupid? <laughs> make them change. The referee wears Grizzlies jerseys, and you wear referee jerseys? <laughs> the referee... <laughs> Our the special. referees are going to wear grizzly jerseys. We're going to wear the referee jerseys. <laughs> I like it. Put the numbers right on the orange bands. Next year, uh, you heard it here first, folks. A referee jersey with a number on the back. No orange bands. Who do you make take it off? Oh, so it's going to look like a prison uniform? <laughs> <laughs> the Iska Jailbirds. <laughs> and we're changing our name, Iska Jailbirds. Par for Olinger, who couldn't pull the trigger. Meanwhile, Fiala there's a game the going wall. on. Martin Fiala. You know, Fiala. I may broadcast the next game instead of coaching it. Oh. Hey, take the, take the mic I'm on the bench. I'm taking the mic down to the bench. You can do that. Live. Hard, hard we'll play. mic up Robbie Fulton. I'm sure that'll be a few, a few bleeps in there. Well, Robbie Fulton of now or Robbie Fulton of yesteryear? <laughs> there's two Yester different people there. <laughs> yesteryear would not be good for anybody. Travis Snow to the front of the goal, across oh. the crease. And, oh, that should be a penalty. Yeah, it should be a penalty. Mullion just takes off the net. Too bad he, Ellis isn't refereeing oh in this tournament. Man, he, <laughs> he had a wide open thing, except the net was three feet over to the left side. Hey, remember that goalie that made all the rule changes because of it? There was a three on O against him, and he just turned around and threw the net off. Mm -hmm. took, <laughs> took the penalty. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> no, so and then it was a penalty shot. I like that. And he's facing one instead of three. Yeah. So if I had to give up a three on no, tell my goalie to turn around and take the net off. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the penalty? Penalty, penalty shot. shot. And penalty. you only have to go against one. You get a 50-50 <laughs> chance there. <laughs> so now they changed it. If you do it on purpose, it's a goal. Listen, I got to go downstairs soon and prepare, so. If there's any more questions about uniforms, hey, it's now's easy. the time. It's easy. All right, boys, we're going to play the box and then walk easy. back out. Easy. We haven't done that. We're not allowed to do that. We'll get yelled at. Joe Cook will yell at me. All right, who's, who, who, who do I got to keep an eye out for on the team? Okada? Do we got to pump up Okada? Schultz? Who do, who do we got to pump Okada, up? Okada, Schultz, Fulton, Wolf. Some names out there. Keepers played well. Corey Walters. Has, has Wolf stabbed anybody yet in this tournament? <laughs> don't tell him I'll I said, call him up here for an interview if you don't, want. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> Shakers on the attack. And this one's knocked away. 
Etchberry up ahead. Cadiz shoots and he missed it this time. He's going for that same spot. How long has Wolf been on your teams, Dennis? Wolf's been on my team since he's 11, so 35 years. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> Chance in front for the Shakers and the shot goes over top of the net. You, you might as well be his uncle. He might as well be the coach. True. <laughs> Special advisor to the head coach? No, no, I'm the advisor, so he'd be advising the advisor. Oh, Valeski nearly takes Let's everybody see if he's out. here. I think they might be here. We'll call him up here. Yeah. Cadiz to Oleski. Now it's very Listen, wrist shot. Goes there's wide. a few animated interviews we could have up here if you want before our game. Totally. Let's see. Hugo V2. Yeah, I see a group of my guys. I'll get you Wolf. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> so you can stab somebody in the next game. Exactly. <laughs> you just keep it PG. I'm going to ask him, is there any truth to the rumor that you've killed a man on the hockey floor? <laughs> Holds the only record for taking off the skate and trying to stab someone. Oleski, a breakaway. He shoots. Whoa. That one would have taken out Dennis if there was he no was, net there. He was <laughs> Actually, the other, day, awake. the other day, the video guy went to Tim and said, can we move the nets down? Yeah, we'll just mechanically move the nets all the way down. <laughs> yeah. I came with a tall ladder and a exacto knife. I can't believe that Jeremy just said, has Wolf stabbed anybody this tournament? That's just not right. That's just so wrong. Yeah, thanks for the inside joke, boys. Yeah, that's a narch. Uh, oh, curse word. John Seamer. And Mullion and knocks the net off again. I've, I've seen Wolf get frisky out on the floor. I'll just put it to you that way. Fiala into the zone. Far circle. He shoots Rayfield, fights it away. All right, we, we sent the mass, the uh, the crew out to get him, so let's see if he comes up. Actually, the first the first time I seen him really get spicy on the floor was in Bensonville at State Wars. Oh, when he was in '88 playing in the '87 division, probably. Travis, no to the oh, back door, and Seamer missed it. Try to get it back in front for Seamer. That one was blocked. Fiala heads the other direction. All right, direction. here comes Wolf. You want Fulton too? That could be some interview. Get Fulton, him. a wrist shot, and Rayfield makes the save. You have to, all the kids watching at home, please turn off your televisions. He's coming up now. <laughs> <laughs> Trifty has no idea what he's in for here. Yeah. I'll just keep doing play-by-play, -play and you guys do your thing. He's... Shot on net again. Rayfield's been good in this game. Four to two is the score. 5.33 left in the first. Palma needs a mercy win to get the two seed, a regulation win to get the three. Right, here we go. Here's your interview. <laughs> here you go. <laughs> here comes Travis Snow in transition. Tries a toe drag. That one is poked away. Now, no, had it knocked aside. Soriano, around the back of the net, centers it. Thomas was open, but the pass just missed. Now, Soriano again, had it knocked away. John. Test, test, I'm back. I think I'm back. There's been requests from back home to mention certain names on the air. That's not going to happen. All right, well. So forget that. The audio board is back. Here's Ellis, Wolf, he's on. Ellis kicked the power strip and knocked out everything. All right, Dennis, Dennis brought his band of banshees up here. <laughs> Meanwhile, while we were away with audio, Ellis getting frisky with his toes over there. I uh, will. I think it was, everything was inadvertent. Cal Talk. Wolf of the Grizzlies and Cal. <laughs> Chris Wolf. Is there, is Chris there any Kyle truth Wolf. to the rumor? Chris Wolf. 
Chris Wolf. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been a long day. I think she didn't call you a werewolf. Oh, Is there boy. any truth to the rumors that you've taken out a man's eyeball with the blade of your stick out on the roller hockey floor? That is not confirmed. <laughs> Nor denied. <laughs> I'm going to plead the fifth. Cadiz around the back of the net. Now right. toss it back into his own end. Let's, let's get a quick preview of this next game. You guys 0-3. What are you trying to accomplish here in the next game? Uh, we're looking to come out and show that, uh, you know, with all our youth, we do belong. Um, trying to mold our kids, get them all ready to, uh, to take over the team. Is, uh, once me and Fulton retire. Is that going to happen? Not for a while. I think, <laughs> I think Cadiz lost a wheel. He did lose a wheel. We are a little upset Jeff O'Connell bailed because he had work. Isn't this a job? You're playing for cash. <laughs> yeah, but work is guaranteed sometimes. Not, a, not according to my taxes. <laughs> All right, so how many years has Dennis been your coach? <laughs> coach is a strong word. How many years has Dennis years brought has you Dennis for teams joined, and yelled at you? Joined you at a hockey rink together. Um, I believe my first tournament was, I was 14, so uh, about, about 16 years now. Wow. Are you 30? I'm 31. Oh boy, way to make me feel old. How old's Dennis now? <laughs> He's up there. 51, maybe? Gonzalez, <laughs> a shot, he scores! Gonzalez makes it 6-2. With exactly three minutes left in the first. All right, so let's let's do this. Let's play a little game. Number one thing you've learned from Dennis, whether it be hockey, life, what and is it, the biggest takeaway that you've learned from Dennis? And it can't Dennis? be anything that involves brute. Yes. I believe I got 175 on my algebra final to graduate high school. <laughs> <laughs> that is not an exaggeration either. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no, no we, we can't put Jelsic down too much. No. Uh, this is a good no, guy. No, we have to. But, but you two are like synonymous at this point. You've been together for so long. Travis No tried to slide to the back door. Come a long way from not knowing how to skate to, uh, to playing at just about every level there is to working at the rink, managing at the rink. Uh, is that, are you working there now? Uh, not anymore. Not anymore? <laughs> so was that a career up move for you? Um. <laughs> Maybe, maybe a little. <laughs> it was getting getting away from the rink got me back into playing hockey. <laughs> there you go. All right, let me ask you this: you got you've been here at State Wars for a long time. Other roller hockey tournaments. What's one of your best memories from this event in particular that you've had and you you've shared with Dennis over the years? Uh, the best from this event is this is my first pro tournament with my younger brother. Oh, awesome! We got. A, we got on the rink together for the first time yesterday, and I don't think he realized it, but you know, it was, it was nice seeing that uh, I've coached him probably his whole roller hockey career. The door flies open here. All right, so let's talk about years past. Is there uh, one moment or one uh, thing that kind of sticks out to you? Uh, I was actually on the team that we won State Wars 1 uh, the year Stahl scored in overtime. Okay. Being a part of that, I... Playing, uh, we were actually half our team was a year younger than the division. Right. But most of, the, I think we had three or four of our Grizzly guys playing up a year, winning the uh, the first state wars. So you've been here to all 15, 15 years. I've almost made all fifteen. So you haven't made all fifteen. I've, uh, I think I took two years off, but every other one we've I've been here. Dennis, all fifteen for you? No. All fifteen for me, baby. Oh, I wow. thought you said you didn't do the first one. No, yeah, he was—he was our coach the first year. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, but you didn't work the first year, right? No. Yeah. Dennis, you've only been working what six, seven years now? This is not. This is year twelve. Twelve working? I didn't work for the first three years. Oh, so you didn't work in Bensonville? Okay. Gotcha. The old guys retired. They had to fill in with him. Gotcha. Meanwhile, Har into the zone. Now he curls back. Oh, look at that pass! John Seymour is in. He shoots Mullion and makes the save. Again, how can you play as good as he has and still let in six goals in a hockey game? His goals against is going to be like nine at the end of the tournament, but he's been unbelievable. In fact, my first couple years, we had a 92 team with a few names I'll throw out there, but not one important one. At least he thinks he wants his name mentioned. But anyway, like Jake Reiser, Mike Stover, some other guys, 92s. We'll keep throwing names out. Well, New Ryan Jersey, Carr, New Jersey Tyler was a, Gear. was a force back in. Uh, what do you mean back then? They still are. Here we are. <laughs> we, we got a little auto take it over for Jersey. Jersey was uh, was definitely one of the uh, 
bigger uh, programs across all the divisions, number-wise. Anyway, and I remember uh, Dennis's, he took off, but I remember Dennis's over 35 guys. Woo! That was a fun bunch. Julian Thomas, the wrist shot that is blocked into the corner. 30 seconds left in the period. I'll, I'll be in that division soon. You should. I'm, I'm a free agent in the over 45 division. Getting excited <laughs> about that. You got to right, start man. getting your name out there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll let you go get changed. You got a big game coming up. Oh, yeah. All right. Here's the deal. We already saw the Wings get a point here tonight. We don't want you guys to go home with an offer. Go out and get you some points here in this last game. We're going to suit little Otto up here to get us a win. There you go. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you, guys. All right, good talking to you, brother. All right, Grizzlies coming up next. Here's 6-2 our score, Trefty, and uh, this one got off to a fast start. Slowed down as of late. Yeah. But, but nonetheless, a lot of goals. We'll head to a break and be back for the second period in SWH Live. Welcome back into SWH Live. Chris Treft alongside Jeremy Ellis. Still a lot to be decided in Pool B. A four goal lead for Palma going into the second period. They need to win by eight to get that two seed. So there's still a chance here. Halfway there. Halfway there. And, and the one thing I will say is you haven't seen them let up. I mean, they've been relentless on the pressure. And uh, both teams really playing a run-and-gun style, which is exciting, especially after a long day of hockey. And you're trying to stay uh, motivated up here in the broadcast booth, Drefty. So that keeps you going. Dennis, back again. Back you don't have the mic on, but... Martin Fiala into the zone. Goes to the outside. Back in front. He scores. We'll have some fun here this second half before I go downstairs to coach. Bruce. Fiala having some fun there. That was a beautiful goal. I think I might have been the only one that saw us of the three, but. I saw it. I just didn't get a chance to say anything because you always talk. Well, that's what I'm supposed to do. Is that right? Yes. All right. Shout out to Kenny Halverson watching this game and waiting forward to the Esker Grizzly game, big fan at home. Kenny's not here? No, Kenny's not here. He's home watching on television set. All right, well, I'm sure he watched Max uh, play earlier. So getting back to that 1992 roster of names I won't mention. Anyway, how was that interview, Jeremy, with Wolf? How'd it was you like good. that? It was Even good. though you said it was Kyle Wolf. <laughs> you think all the days came. of you announcing, you'd learn his name. I don't know where that came from. Wow. I will say that watching back home, there are a lot of Grizzly fans. One of them is Katie O'Connell, the only O'Connell that I know. There's is, always Grizzly fans. Is yeah, Kyle his brother? Remy Parker's back home watching, couldn't make it because he's going to D1 to play at Maine. What does that have to do with anything? Seek shot off the side of the net. Is Kyle his brother? I'm sorry? Is Kyle his brother? Yeah, he was talking about... Yes, Ryan. Ryan well, I mean, brother. I just first glanced and, and looked, and I, I saw Kyle's name there, so that's why I said it. Travis Snow dancing to the zone, shoots, Mullion and makes the save. So there is an excuse there. I was wondering where Remy was. I knew he... Remy's going to Maine, man. I know, so they, they wouldn't let him come here? If he uh, continues to be successful, he will be back. Well, good for Remy. Great kid and deserve everything he he gets. He's uh, fun playing, to watch play too. Playing ice hockey at Maine? Yeah. 
He is at Maine, going to be at Maine, sorry. <laughs> Molesky giving a rough ride in the corner. Loses the puck battle, it comes out front. Now Oleski gets the ax out and starts lumberjacking everybody. <laughs> hey, if he's not gonna get the puck, he's not gonna let everybody else have the puck. Exactly. We'll have more players, Jeremy, don't worry. Got oh, guys I'm back home listening to this oh, broadcast. Sure. They're looking to play. Danny I Render's one of them. He's a 98, he'll be back sooner or later. A lot of 98s missing from the 98 team. Some of them are playing on the pro squad. Only two, I believe. But Remy will be back. We'll be back. This is just a trial run. How's the uh, how's the Dry program run. at ISCA doing these Program's days? Program's doing well. That's good. I have uh, Andrew Otto helping me out now. He runs a lot of our youth stuff, so I don't have to do all the work. That's always a bonus. That's always a can, bonus. That's why you can take vacations in Croatia. For Five week vacations, baby. Five weeks. Fiala looks for another one. His shot goes over top of the net. I think Fiala's really figured out the floor and starting to come into his own here. So when I'm ready to go to Croatia, I got a place to stay out there, Dennis? Yeah, so See grandma right and front. grandpa had a house there. It's now mom and uncle's house. So the only thing we're paying for is a flight. I like it. Outstanding. Seamer loses Oof. the puck. Tried to go between the legs on a nice move. So Trefty, what do we got here? 6-3? They need to win 11-3? They get yes. the two seed? Yes. No matter what? Yes. You've done all the math? Yes. Yeah, wow. It's just a goals differential, right? It's not uh, goals yeah. for, goals against. Well, goals point. against would be the second one, and now that they've given up a goal because they right. were tied coming in, right. they lose that one too. So they have to – they're – going into the game, they were seven behind in the goal differential, so they have to win by eight. Not sure if they know that or care. Oh, I'm, I'm sure, sure Rob Turnaman knows that. I'm sure Rob Labeda knows that. Turnaman. They came into the period leading by four. They were halfway there. It's tough. Could ease and shoots. Mulligan didn't make a save, especially with this goalie. You could play 100% well enough to win by mercy and not with this guy in between the pipes. Yeah. Yep. I will say, where is George Brown? Can't wait to see him it's tomorrow. Like, no offense, Waldo? Jeremy. Where's Jeez, Waldo? You're ready to just kick event. me out of here. <laughs> well, when you call Chris Wolf, Kyle Wolf, we've got no choice. I make one little mistake. Everyone's got one a day. All right, all right. So Kenny Halverson just sent me the picture of Max's teeth. I saw that. I have it as well. Looks like you'll be able to drink through a straw easier, I guess. Looks like the modeling right. career has come to an end. At he least took a uh, puck to the face? Stick to the face? Stick, yeah, stick yesterday. To the it was face that famous conduct we were night. talking about. Penalty coming against the Shakers. I believe his father's exact quote was, suck it up and get back on the rink. What What happened to him? I missed this yesterday. High stick. Itan Chavera, high stick. Remember, Oof. he got kicked out of the game. Oh, that was the result. Oh, yeah. Doing his best impression of Greg Thompson now. It's going to make it tougher to eat corn on the cob for sure. I got six fake teeth. I'm doing just fine. He'll, yeah. be, he'll figure it out. Yeah. Got to give that dental plan a workout. How are you doing, Bob? Couple live commentary. There's the, there's the man himself. I thought the man himself was gone for the night. The Special number one, guest appearance. The number one seated coach in Pool A. He wants to see who his opponent's going to be. So do you know the scenarios, Tim? I've worked these out rather hard. I heard we're playing Alkali. Unless the Shakers win in regulation. Okay, then who will we play? Pama? Pama. Okay. So. And Never know in this division, Trefty. No. And now if the Golden Knights win by eight, they get the two seed. If they win by seven or less, then Tour gets the. If I know Coach Rob, he knows that. Yeah. He's always a, a mathematician at the uh, at, at the bracket board. <laughs> Another huge save by Mulligan, and this goalie is is going to be the reason that they're going to be a three seed. All right. So did you imagine having to play Revel as a four seed, being the number one? That's. Uh, I, th I think it's just a testament to how strong this division right. is. I, I was talking to a bunch of guys today, and we. Pretty much agreeing between myself and Rob Turnaman and Jason Miro, and I forgot who else we're talking about, saying that this might be the deepest pro division ever in the sport. I, I can't remember one deeper. 
Well, when you got teams that are, you know, fighting to get into the playoffs that are going to be, you know, teams that can win championships, that's going to be a tough row. I mean, you're the only team to come out undefeated in the round robin, so you got that going for you, but it only means so much in the round robin. You still got to win it. And Travis Noah, one-timer, and he scores. Sorry, Trefty. And with that seed, you only really get, you know, a matchup. You're not getting the, the buys that we've seen in other tournaments, so you're not getting one less game along the way. It's just more of a matchup row. Yeah, you know, three games in one day is tough. You know, sometimes I would love to have this division be a four-day division where you break it up a little bit. But sure. With the older guys and jobs and families, you know, doing the three days seems to work well. But three days potentially in one day is tough. And I know our guys are thinking all they're thinking about tonight, I'm sure, is, you know, last year we got knocked out in the quarterfinals by a, a strong Border Cat team. So you, you never know what's going to happen. As a one seed, if I'm not mistaken, we right? one seed, yeah. So that, that goes out the window, right? And now you're facing an even tougher quote-unquote rebel team yeah I think every team you know anyone, anyone that's in the playoffs I think of the, of the eight teams in it if the eight teams are in it that I think are in it I think anyone could win it well there was a pretty clear pretty clear designation with the eight teams in the four that weren't going to make it in so really just all today has just been about seating and battling for where you're going to end up in the seating in uh in the playoffs yeah, I know, you know, back in the day, guys like Rob and some guys used to look at that stuff and lose on purpose or, sure. you know, we do talked things. To, we talked about that up yeah, here. Yeah, you know, I remember back when I was first involved and a lot of times it came back to bite them in the butt when right. they did that. Um, but they wanted to have certain matchups and, you know, I don't believe in that. It's just you, you win your games and it, it falls where it falls. And right. I always said if we're not going to win it, I don't care if we get knocked out in the quarters, the semis, or the finals. If you don't win it, you don't win it. So exactly. you got to beat you got to beat the best to be the best, right? Well, we had a discussion. Trifty was talking about how they do it in the uh, SP, where they call it the challenge round, where the top four teams get to pick their opponent for the next round. So in the SPHL, how the playoff works is the number one seed in round number one gets to pick any of the seven other teams, and then the second remaining highest seed gets to pick. Now that. Has a lot of drama to it. Would you ever think about that for the Palma Pro? So we were we were actually thinking with you being the clear cut number one, who would you pick? And debating about who you would pick in that next round of of the playoff teams, not the four teams eliminated, but of the playoff teams, who would you guys decide to play if you had the option in that first round? Yeah, I, well one for one, I don't like that scenario. <laughs> I, I I think that's kind of I, weird, I know, you know you're not gonna ever answer that yeah, question. <laughs> but I think that's just asking for trouble when you answer that one. Um, <laughs> I can honestly say that anyone that we might play in the playoffs tomorrow at any round can beat us. You know, any of the teams we haven't played yet are tough. And, you know, it's always tough to beat a good team twice. So any of the teams in our bracket that we've beaten so far, it's tough to beat a good team twice. So I don't, I, I don't know who I'd want to play. It's just wherever the chips fall, they fall, I guess. Right. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree with that. And I don't want to give any other team some fire in the locker room to say that uh, they wanted to play us, right? And, and talking to, looking at, you know, how it shaked out with this year's results in teams, your bracket may have been a little off from bracket B because pool B is very strong with those four teams. I mean, look, there's going to be potentially, well, with Rebel losing, there's going to be two three-in-one teams or three three-in-one teams. Like, it's, it's very equal on this side, so... The four teams you have to face in the opposite end are a lot tougher than the ones that uh, A has to face. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's funny how it works out. You know, I, I think you guys know this. You know, we seeded the teams based on last year's results, and that's how we're going to continue to do that moving forward. And things change. Like, you know, Rinkrat won last year, and, you know, they lost a couple key players, which changes their team a little bit. But they still won the tournament, and, you know, the Border Cats in our division made it to the semifinals. So there's two teams in our division, not counting us, that made it to the semifinals last year. So, and now you got the Roadrunners who just won the Narch West tournament. Um, you know, Grant, I think that was, you know, not as strong as this, but they're a very good up and coming team. Um, so it, it's a tough I division. I don't even want to remind you what Rebel did in the East Coast at Narch, barely making it in the playoffs and then going on and, and right. upsetting and, 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 all the and way and to the You know, our team. Um, yeah, it's, like I said, I think anyone anyone could beat anyone tomorrow. I mean, what about you guys? I'll put you guys on the spot. You, know, you, don't, you don't have a, anyone, uh, you're not a coach of a team. That you can't upset anyone. Like, from you guys watching so far, if you had to pick two teams you could see potentially in the finals, you know, who, who I would mean, you I mean, with, with me being here for the full day, I would say the two impressive teams are, are your guys and, and Black Ice of, of 
what I've seen probably the most two impressive which, teams today. Yeah, which you, well, you, you're like, oh, well, that's the cliche answer, but it's sure. the truth too. Because that's what I was going to say. I think, too, most of the teams player-wise, maybe with the exception of the snipers being a little more deep and talented, it's going to come down to Golton. Who's got the, the better or the hottest goalie? And that's what it'll come down to. So, and everybody's got a good goalie. No one you look at and say, oh, that, you know, that team yeah, has a drop-off no, in goalie. There's no teams that goaltending is a weakness, I would say. And you guys know you've been around the block a long time. You know, hockey's all about matchups, right? Some teams just match up well sure. with other teams. So that that's the big X factor with that, who you wind up playing and if they're the team that you just have trouble, you have trouble with. Like us, traditionally, the Mudcats always seem to beat us. You know, whatever the reason is, we right. never match up well with them. Um, so it's just certain teams that you, and even the Border Cats give us fits a lot. So it, it's it's all about matchups, really. Yeah, the Border Cats, I think, went through a little bit of a lull here in the last couple games, but I think they're going to be ready to go come uh, come playoff time as well. Hey, I got a question for you. Well, hold on. The, the Knights scored, by the way, while you're you talking. Oh, we got a hockey game going they, on. Yeah, they did. <laughs> there was a goal down there at the other end. I, I Question for you here. So you got the new kid, Jaden Guzman. All right, and he's really showing showing what he's made of down there. And I asked him during the skills if he's had to do anything yet as the rookie on the team. Any, you know, hazing, quote, unquote, you know, from the guys on the squad. And he said not yet. So I'm sure you guys got something up your sleeves for the young fella. Got to do something to, to welcome in to the to the pro division. Is, are you going to unveil any secrets or is that going to be on tap for later or what? You know, that's the kind of stuff I, I, I guess I leave up to the guys, whatever they're going to do. I don't even, I'm not even privy to it. It's kind of like, I don't want to hear about it. Um, I do know one thing. I, I, when he was on the rink today at one point, I went up to down the bench and I spoke to a few of our leaders and just said, hey, because, you know, they didn't know him. The only, the only guys on the team that really knew Jaden before this was myself and Greg Thompson. And every one of them just said, love him. Love him. He's great. Like, so they love having him. And I even asked Jaden, I said, oh, we got some personalities on this team, don't we? And he just looked at me and says, yeah. You know, well, I, I don't funny. think he's been around guys like this before. The one time he was out there, it was him with Thompson defensively, and up front was Bielston, and who else was it? And uh, Kramer, I think. Uh, Jack Combs, probably. Or, or Jack yeah. Combs. But I, or Kramer was out there for like a, a, just a tiny bit. But nonetheless, it was three older gentlemen, not to say too, too old, but then you have the, the 2001 Guzman. Now a chance here for the Knights. It's loose in front. Oh, my Bullied goodness. Bullied in a save. Another oh my one. Goodness. Oh, my goodness. He just made a paddle save that was unbelievable. Can we get a replay, gentlemen? They better catch the bow mission replay with that one. <laughs> Holy smokes. Now Fiala in. Centers in. A chance. Rayfield makes the save even though it's going in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to do something to top the one down at the other end. Did we get that one, gentlemen? They're working on it. They're working on it in oh, the I truck. Know. Truck, a.k.a. to our left. I've gotten so many texts today from guys home watching the stream and watching the replays and the camera angle, and people are just loving it at home. Oh, yeah. It's nice. It's nice. Oh, here we go. Oh, wow. Oh, oh and then oh. he also oh. whacked it, it in. Oof. An incredible save, and that guy has been a human highlight reel this tournament. Yes, he is. Now a centering feed, Ooh, Chuck Rayfield the save this time. These goaltenders are exasperated out there. They're just facing a lot of plastic. I'll tell you guys a quick funny story from last game. So as we were playing rink rat, there was a time during the game where someone, I think crazy uh, Kramer, gave a pass over to Chris Terry on our team, and Terry chose not to shoot, and he, and he went to pass back, and someone on the bench yelled, come on, Terry, you got to shoot that. And I looked at him and I said, it's hard to tell a guy who's played over 100 games in the NHL when he should shoot the yeah, puck. It's you know? right. hard to play a guy who has a, an AHL scoring title. Yeah. yeah, shoot it, bud. He looked like he's starting to get his game going, huh, yeah. Jeffy? No, I, I even mentioned it earlier. He obviously about it. He had great hands in the first couple games, but he didn't have his roller legs. He still was being effective, including the slap shot from the low slot that would have killed the goalie if it would have hit him. But got his legs under him, and now that once he, you know, because those ice hockey guys, that have played roller before but just haven't played in a while. It takes a game or two to get those roller legs, but now that he's got it, he looks like the Terry of old. And he's going to be really dangerous in the playoffs. He's only getting better. 
Yeah, the last time he played roller hockey was the Palma Pro Championship game two years ago yeah. when we won. Uh, it was his last game on wheels oh, before wow. today, uh, yesterday. So pretty impressive. So what, what fired Greg up so much in that game today? Him and Hayden Maxwell. Yeah, so I guess Hayden Maxwell, you know, a, a young, excited rookie out there, you know. Uh, I guess he, according to Greg, threw a bunch of wax at him. And Greg said he let three or four or five or six go. <laughs> and he just had enough um, and had to give it back at him. So I don't think he was expecting that from Hayden, who normally uh, is a pretty mild-mannered kid, especially around Greg. Well, I don't think but Hayden expected it from Greg, who's the nicest guy in the world. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, the best part is I saw Dan laughing about it on the bench. Yeah, so that was that was good. That's you know that's hockey for you. Like you literally, know. he's watching his son just get punched in the face by a guy who's way taller than him, and he just started laughing. And then it was a bunch of verbal jazz between Rowan Porter, who <laughs> has got a, a pretty quick tongue from the penalty box, and Hayden <laughs> back. So uh, it was pretty entertaining for sure. Well, Rowan was down here telling everybody about it. So yeah, we got a we got a little. I think he yelled Flip something at him like, you know who that is? That's Greg Thompson. Show some respect. <laughs> <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds par for the course for Rowan. He's got a great point. Rowan knows his role on the snipers. It was funny. He got hit in the lip in his first shift of the game. And I said, wow, that's some percentage. You played two shifts this tournament, and you got hit in the face once. Like, Play on the back door. Shut Rayfield. What a save. It's been a goaltending uh, I, show, huh? it's been a, It's been an absolute showcase. Hugo V2 absolutely robbed there. We got to get the replay on that one. I know they're working on it. Wow. Two of the best saves that I've seen all day have happened within five minutes of one another. In a relatively meaningless game. Not that any game's meaningless because there's money on the line and Palma can still get the two seed. But remember that? If Palma comes back to Mercium which they're three goals away in three minutes, they can do it. That save was the catalyst. That was huge. Remember, if they only win by seven goals, that save that he made down at the other end. Yeah. Has there been, it's possible, uh, Trefty, that they, they could be, a, when these all these round robin games are done, that not any team finishes with zero points possibly, right? Yeah. Because the Shakers, uh, right. they've gotten a point, right? No. Oh, they haven't. No, no not yet. They did. Okay. So they're going to need a miracle comeback for that. Okay. But they could be the only one because if it goes to a shootout in the next and, game. Then and the Wings got the shootout before win, yeah. correct? Right. And now you got Connix and Alkali who both have no wins right now playing each other for the last game of the night. Connix has been a pretty big surprise. Not a bad team at all. They just haven't. Uh, Connix? Yeah. Yeah. Just didn't get it going, really. Yeah, coming into it, so the four unseeded teams coming in were the Grizzlies, the Shakers, the Wings, and the Roadrunners based on last year. So at the end of the day, you know, it looks like three of those four will be the three of the four not to make the playoffs. So, you know, it's not that it's expected or not expected, but they were not teams that played last year. And they have tough schedules, and yeah. it's, it's tough being that new team in the division. Well, the Roadrunners are right in the spot that Shot oh and Moynihan, did you see uh, that? Geez, What's okay. going on? Did you see that save? He just did a Susco stack with the splits on a toe save. Can we just have these two teams keep playing? Let's just play two on two and let the goalies work. What's going on? But the Roadrunners are in that spot that the Black Ice were a couple years ago when they got that first uh, win when they upset you guys. <laughs> uh, that, that late night down in Florida at Narch there, and then they went on to win Narch Pro. Then they come and win State Wars that same year as well. So it's just that, uh, you oh, know, that here, confidence Martin boost. Fiala gets a breakaway. Fiala, big hit shot, he scores. Yeah, that was a great goal scorer. We watched him. He was uh, one of our focal points at uh, World Championships when oh, we played yeah, Czech man. Republic. Um, very offensive, great hands, obviously, around the net. And he gets another just one here. He seems to give that look like it's just too easy when he gets in there. Yeah, I wasn't familiar with him at all and then heard today that he was one of the guys that you guys played in that gold medal championship game over there. And you can definitely see uh, the skill that he has out on the floor with the goal scoring ability. And that pretty much seals that our seating's all but done now. So. Yeah, we're working real hard, Jeremy, to try to get that Czech team to the Palma Pro Championship, you know. Um, State's always become an issue with some guys with ice hockey and whatnot. Sure. But I'll t I got to tell you, now, granted, the game's a little different with smaller ranks, smaller nets, but playing that Czech team overseas, they're one hell of a team. Oh, I can only um, imagine. I mean, they're a team that could come here and easily win this division. Um, they have eight guys like Fiala on that team and a, an extremely strong goaltender. Have you uh, 
now you had discussions with them when you guys were over there about trying to trying to come and just it's more of a date issue yeah and even the Finnish team last year had reached out the Finnish team that we played in the finals at Slovakia two years ago to IIHF who's just as good as the U.S. team and uh, the Czech team and they've shown interest in coming over and playing as well the issue again just becomes ice hockey and when the season starts right. and guys getting over here but uh, it'd be incredible if we get teams like that to start coming over to play especially without there being an IHF tournament anymore. Right, exactly. Yeah, you'd fill a void there. So the playoffs are pretty much set. Snipers, the 1A, will face 4B, Alkali, Revel. 2B will be Tour Mudcats versus 3A, Rinkrat, on that side of the bracket. The other side is Mission Black Ice 1B versus 4A, Mission Bauer Border Cats, an 8 seed again, as they always seem to be. And they usually pull off some upsets. Tour Roadrunners 2A will face off 3B, Pamela Beta Golden Knights. That's going to be a good game. That's one I'm looking forward to. That is a, a Golden Knights and the Roadrunners. I think that's four great games there. So yeah. for our fans at home to be able to come here tomorrow and sit down and just watch four great hockey games in a row like that. And then you got your semis in the final and... Well, the beauty of it is I got a nice little phone holder in the uh, car. Right, you won't be with us no. So when I'm driving home, I'll have, I'll have the uh, stream brought up on the car there. Pump it right through the speakers. So. so I don't know if I told you guys, but, you know, thanks to Mission Bauer, you know, uh, we're actually, so during our championship game tomorrow, it'll be the only game in the building going on. So all the rinks will be down except for that one to get everyone over here. And at halftime, we're going to have a 15-minute halftime show. Teams will go back to the locker room, and we're going to have a uh, chance five Fans are going to get picked out of a raffle, be able to come out at center, and we're going to have one of those uh, things covering the net with a little hole in the bottom, and if a player scoro. can put a puck through the scoro, and anyone that hits it, we're going to repair mission skates. Awesome. Awesome. That'll be fun. Mission Bauer. So where, what's the, the details? The where do they sign up for that to get into that competition? Is that going to be up tomorrow? Yeah, I'm not sure how Mission's doing it. Um, I thought they were going to be doing like a, something at their booth. They may do something tomorrow with their uh, sauce kit game they have going on there. Um, so player is doing well in that. So those are interested. I don't know how many kids are listening at uh, 10.50 a night. But if they can go down to the mission booth tomorrow. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll spread the word out tomorrow during our games. But I think it'll be fun for the kids to be able to come out there and do that with a pair of uh, great mission skates. Um, and it's pretty cool, too, to get the, the guys a chance to go back to the locker room, regroup a little bit, rest up a bit, and uh, talk about the second half. Oh, for sure, especially third game of the day. They're going to need that extra rest, definitely. <laughs> yeah, three games in a day is tough, especially the building's a little warm down on the rink. You know, it's been hot outside. It's yep. supposed to be 90 degrees all weekend, and that definitely adds to it. Well, a final here, 8-4 to four in the Battle of the Palmas. We got Palma a little, team, uh, little, little Palma picture going on down there. Palma there you go. Golden Knights with the victory over the Palma Shakes. 